Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Lesson 2 from Chapter 4, uh, found on page 271, Compare and Order Rational Numbers. Now, we discussed in the last lesson what a rational number was, right? A rational number includes whole numbers, it includes integers, natural numbers, and obviously rational numbers, okay? Um, you can please go ahead and read this on your own. I don't want to confuse you by reading it to you. I want you to actually go ahead and read it. But what I would like to do, and for the sake of keeping the video short, is get right to this example, okay? Where we have um, the simplest form. Actually, they don't even have the simplest form. The simplest form is actually natural numbers. Natural numbers are all the numbers except zero. So one, two, three. Like when you were little and you first start, learned to count, you started counting in one, right? You have one pencils, two pencils, three. Those are natural numbers. And then, and then there's whole numbers. Whole numbers is all the natural numbers with zero. So two is a natural number. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fill this out by uh, writing the numbers from the number bank on the diagram. Here's our number bank. Okay, we have decimal eight. We have uh, number two point two bar notation. We have negative one, uh, uh, one, and one and two thirds. Okay, let's write them in here. So whole numbers. Two is a whole number, and one is a whole number. So go ahead and write one right there, next to the two. Okay, so right here a one. So that one's done. Okay, and then we have integers. Integers are both positive and negative whole numbers. Here's another one right there. And now we have negative one. Rational numbers is everything that falls in between. Okay, rational numbers can be percent, can be um, fractions, they can be decimals, like decimal zero a. Okay, they can be uh, a decimal, a repeating decimal. You see, with bar notation, right there. And they can also be a mixed number, so one and two thirds. Okay, everything in between numbers, negative or positive, can be a an n percent can be a rational number. Okay, so this is a rational number. And the, another way to write this one would be negative one decimal four bar notation. Okay. Now please copy the numbers exactly where I copied them, so that I know that you watch this video. This is a key answer. And also please add this negative one decimal four bar notation with an equal sign, okay? Uh, not all the numbers are rational numbers. The Greek letter pi represents the non-terminating and non-repeating number whose first few digits are three decimal one four, and then it keeps going. This number is an irrational number. It never stops, and it continues to be different. There's no absolutely no pattern to it. Use the internet to search for digits of pi. Okay, see what you find. When I Google pi, as you can see, I did that right there. I get a nice calculator on Google, and it shows me pi. And you can see that none of the numbers actually really repeat in any form of pattern. Yeah, I see a 59 there and a 59 there, but the one before it is a is a three, and there's no three there. So really, it's not a repeating in any form or or, or pattern. Okay? And actually, this continues on infinitely because it's a non-terminating. So if you'd like, let's go ahead and copy that number okay, right in here. Copy it right in there. So as a key answer, please copy this number right there. Okay? Copy it. Okay, comparing rational numbers. When we compare fractions, for example, which is a common, um, a, a, they're both rational numbers. And let's say I want to compare 3 over 4 compared to 1 fourth. Right? This is easy to compare because they both have a common denominator. They both have a common denominator, so then we look at the numerator and we can see that the numerator is less. So clearly, 3 fourth is greater than 1 fourth, right? But what if we don't have a common denominator? What if we have something like, uh, let's say, 3 fourth again, and now I have 5 eighths? Which one's greater? Okay, and they're both actually really close fractions, but which one would be greater? What we have to do now is we have to find a common denominator. A common denominator is a common multiple of the denominators of two or more factors. The least common denominator, or what we call the LCD for short, is the least common multiple. What we mean by multiple is when you count by a number, for example, I can count by fours, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, those are multiples of 4. And multiples of 8 are 8, 16, uh, 24, 32, those are multiples of 8, because I'm counting by 8. So i got to find a common multiple for these two. Well, the first multiple for 8 is 8, but the second multiple of 4 is 8. 
So there's a common multiple right there, okay? So let me move this out of the way, and I have eight. That's my common multiple for the two. What did I do to the four to make it eight? I doubled it, so I do the same to the three, and it becomes six. And what did I do to the uh, eight here? Nothing, so that remains as a five. So which number is greater? Six eight is greater than five eighths. So three quarters is greater than five eighths. Remember, if you felt like I went too fast, rewind and watch that again. That's the beautiful thing about videos. Okay, now we can practice that. Let's see, we have, um, you can fill in with less than, greater than, uh, or equal to, okay? And you can see it here, that they're using this tool, okay, a number line with all the numbers, all the integers and mixed numbers, all the rational numbers um, laid out so that we can see where they are and that makes it visually easy to compare. Okay, for example one. Uh, I believe it is example one, yeah. We are given a number line, right? And we are given the value negative five and negative six. So all the numbers, we can put all the numbers between negative five and negative six here. And we're going to compare negative five, five ninths, and negative five, one ninth. But you know what? We don't even really need a number line, right? You know why we don't need a number line for this? Because we have the same common denominator. Look at that, we have the same common denominator. If we have the same common denominator, all we have to do is look at the numerator. And you can see that this numerator is less than this numerator. But wait, 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 wait. We're looking for the lesser and greater value. It's a negative value. That means that this number, because this 5 is higher, is further away from 0 than this number is further away from 0. You understand what I mean by that? Because we're moving in the negative direction. Let's say that just use the number line for a second. Let's say that this is zero, right? And we move along this way. We're going to find negative five and one ninth before we find negative five and five ninths. You see what I mean? Because as is increasing, as the value is increasing and the numbers are counting up, because it's negative, it's actually moving in this direction, in that direction, that way. Okay? So which one is less? Well, this number has a lesser value than this number because this number is moving, it's closer to the zero in the direction of positive, positive numbers. You understand? Now using the number line, okay, we can go and say, okay, this is the middle of it, right? And over here, I know I have negative five and a half, right? Because we're moving towards the negative six hole. And then I know that if I were to break this down into nine parts, okay, I would have, well, nine is not an even number, but I could have one, four on this side, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. This is just an estimate, boys and girls, that I'm doing here. Um, and I'm going to have one ninth, five and one ninth, negative five and one ninth, and then negative five ninth, negative five and five ninth, right around there. Okay? And you can see, now this you can, you can copy down, you can see very clearly which number is less than which number because we're moving in the negative direction this number is less than this number okay so simply you write it as negative oh sorry backwards I can erase that though uh, with my eraser right? negative 5 and 5 9 is less than negative 5 and 1 9 copy this exactly like that right on the side answer on, on the side of the book I mean the margin Okay, now for example two, we're going to compare, but now we don't have the common denominator. Now we have to find a common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? When we're counting by multiples of six and multiples of nine, I know that I can do six, 12, six, 12, 18, and I can do nine, 18. So clearly I have 18 as my common. What did I do to the six? I multiplied it by three, so I do the same to the five and I get 15. What did I do to the 9? I multiplied it by 2, so I do the same to the 7, and I get 14. Which number is greater? 15, 18, right here, is greater than 14, 18. You see? Okay. Uh, over here, we're going to have a common uh, multiple of 50. I can, you can write it as I just did the last one, or you can write it as two separate ones if you want. Okay? What did I do to the 5? I multiplied it by 10. I do the same to the, to the 1. What did I do to the 50? Nothing, so I do nothing to the 7. And which one is greater? 
10 15 10 50th is greater than 7 50th and finally we have um, common multiple there oh that's gonna be tough because we have to count by tens and we're not gonna get there until we get to 160 so 160 is actually the common multiple okay so 160 Actually, you know what, now that I think about it, no, um, if I count by 16, 80, I will get to 80, will I not? Because 16 times 4, no, 16 times 5 is 80, 16 times 5, so I'll just do that, I'll do 80. And I have to multiply 16 times 5 to get 80, so I'll do the same to the 9, 9 times 5 is 45, and it's negative 45, okay? And what did I do to the 10? I multiplied it by 8, so I do the same to the 7. 7 times 8 is 56, negative 56. Well, remember, the greater the negative number, the less value it has, right? And because it's like more in debt, being more in the hole. So it has lesser value than this. So it, it turns out to be that negative 45 is a bigger number than negative 56. And there's your answers. On your own, please read um, example three, and uh, let's work on example um, on the on the question together. Okay, in a second period class, thirty-seven point five percent. Oh, I know that this is going to be by eighths. Remember how I asked you to remember to count by eighths? Well, one eighth is twelve point five, two eighths is twenty-five percent, and three eighths is thirty-seven point five percent. Right? So this is three eighths. In a second period class, thirty-seven point five percent of students like to bowl bowling, you know? In a fifth period class, 12 out of 29 students like to bowl. In which class does a greater fraction of students like to bowl? Okay, so now we're going to compare 12 out of 29, okay? Compared to the percent. Now don't forget, that is a percent. We can change it to a decimal by dividing it by 100, and it would be 0 decimal 375, right? 3 decimal 75. But I said, asked you in the past, well, if you wanted to, then, then you write this over 1,000, don't forget, right? And, and you delete the 0, this, you don't, you don't need the 0 anymore in decimal 5, because now you wrote it as a fraction, and now you can compare fractions. We know this, but what if I told you that we could just do 12 over 29, compared to one eighth. No, sorry, not one eighth. Let me erase that. Not one eighth. Three eighths. Because I have it memorized already that 37.5, I've learned that is three eighths. And now we just have our new our nicely simplified fractions. You see? Well and now I just have to look for a common denominator. Okay? The common denominator between these two is going to be hard to find because you have to count by 29s and by 8s. So you know what you can just do? You can just multiply these into one another. 8 times 29, and that's going to give you a common denominator. Not necessarily the lowest, but it will give you one. And then you do the same thing to the top, and you see what number you get here and what numbers you get here. Something else you can do that would make it very simple instead of finding common denominators because you're going to get a large number is just simply divide and turn them into, um, into decimals. And we know how to do that. We know already this one is 0 decimal 375. We know that one. But here we have to divide 12 divided by 29, where we have 12 divided by 29. Okay, we know that that's going to be 0 decimal, and we add a 0 there. And now it's 29 into um, 120. We know it's 4, right? Because it's actually, if you multiply 30 times 4, you get 120. So we know it's at least 4. Well, if it's at least 4, 0 decimal 4, 0 decimal 4 is greater than 0 decimal 3. And there is our answer. So the fifth grade class is the period that likes to bowl more. Actually, I meant to say fifth period class, not fifth grade. Fifth period. There you go. Please copy that down as a key answer. Please try number four on your own. Leave the guided practice for class and complete the independent practice on your own. Have a good day. See you in class.